This is your brain. This is your brain on a new wave of feminism. Bossy. 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 When I was growing up, I was called bossy. I think the word bossy is just a squasher. Being labeled something matters. By middle school, girls are less interested in leadership than boys. And that's because they worry about being called bossy. Yeah, that's right. What else could possibly explain the lack of women in leadership roles but the word bossy? And what better way to correct that than by banning a word? We need to help them lean in. Words matter. Let's just ban the word bossy. Yes, apparently this is the latest in a string of feminist explanations to explain why there aren't more women in certain fields. I mean, it's got nothing to do with sexual dimorphism in humans. You know, that outrageously sexist reason why we split up the Olympics by sex. The belief that women are somehow a naturally weaker gender is a deeply ingrained socially constructed myth, which of course is completely false. Or the fact that the physical dimorphism is accompanied by behavioural dimorphism as well. You know, as a consequence of having that neural net we call a brain <laughs> marinated in mostly one hormone or another. Nah, it's got nothing to do with sexual dimorphism in the behaviour of humans. It's all down to the word bossy. When I was growing up, I was called bossy. I think the word bossy is just a squasher. Being labelled something matters. By middle school, girls are less interested in leadership than boys. And that's because they worry about being called bossy. Firstly, with those feminists, like Rebecca Watts. That's right, you uh, liberal intellectual guy who has a healthy interest in science and skepticism, but who finds feminism distasteful and would rather not hear about it. You are worse than rape threats. Who told us that sexism and atheism was so bad that a woman could get asked for coffee in an elevator. And that's why there weren't so many women in atheism. While she simultaneously thinks starting a charity fundraiser by spitefully insulting every single male atheist in the audience. It's just funny. I opened with a joke referencing the fact that, hello YouTube, it's been a while, I've missed you, and I'm guessing that you've missed me too, because I've heard that if a male atheist on YouTube goes too long without calling a woman a cunt, his balls will actually shrivel up and then tuck up inside of him, forming what some call a mangina. Most people got the joke. Most people got the joke. Rule number one, uh, don't try to be funny, even though you are obviously not funny. Um, Seriously, you start your video by spitting in people's faces and then blame the people whose faces that you've just spat in for not finding it funny. You think that my sarcasm and feminism causes misogyny. In the same way that birds flying south for the winter causes the snow to come. No, Rebecca. I think the people are pissed at you was caused by you spitting in their faces for exactly the same reason that I think smoking causes cancer. And then you portray the fact that they're pissed off that you spat in their faces as a reason why you're persecuted and people need to give you money. Or maybe that's the whole point. I'm going to continue speaking out about feminism and harassment of women online. Why? Because it pisses you off. And then we have the pop culture critic who doesn't even like playing computer games because it's gross. And also video games. Like, I would love to play video games, but I don't want to go around shooting people and ripping off their heads and it's just gross. So Telling people that the reason that she doesn't like playing computer games is because it's gross. Oh no. That won't do at all. That doesn't involve accusing people of sexism or blaming men. Yes, the reason she doesn't like playing computer games is because of the sexist depiction of women in computer games, especially the ones that involve shooting people and ripping off their heads and it's just gross. So An argument that is just so mind-blowingly stupid. It's like calling Victoria's Secret sexist because they only make lingerie in women's sizes and that they don't use an equal number of men to model their lingerie. Yes, the first person shooter industry demographic is mostly men because most girls, like Anita here, find that sort of thing gross. I'm still getting the headshot just like boom headshot, boom headshot, boom headshot. Shooting people and ripping off their heads and it's just gross. So. Look, Anita, just because you choose not to play a game that doesn't appeal to you, 
that doesn't make it sexist. You choosing not to play that game does not mean that you are being discriminated against by an unquestioning boys club. Here is that they're actually trying to maintain the status quo of video games as a male dominated space. Boom headshot, boom headshot, boom headshot. And all of the privileges and entitlements that come with an unquestioned boys club. I love to play video games, but I don't want to go around shooting people and ripping off their heads and it's just gross, so. Just like when I choose not to go shopping for lingerie because it doesn't appeal to me, that's not sexism. I am not being discriminated against by an unquestioning girls club. Now, if that's what I was after, there are far easier ways to get discriminated against by an unquestioning girls club. Like the one that gave you $160,000 to make some videos. I actually raised 25 times what I initially asked for. Nearly 7,000 individuals contributed to make my Tropes vs. Women in Video Games project bigger and better and more expansive than I could ever have imagined. Of which you've made four in two years. $160,000. Or maybe that's the whole point. Oh yeah, good business is where you find it. And selling victimhood to feminism is just as easy as selling a persecution complex to the religious. Listen, we have uh, an outstanding broadcast for you today. I took the time to do a compilation concerning Christian persecution in America. Check this out. And almost as profitable. There is coming a time very quickly here in America that we will not be able to bring this gospel message the way we currently are. That's why we are urging you to donate today to continue and expand the work of this broadcast ministry before the lights go out. God bless you. And now you get this outrageous spin-off that the reason that there aren't as many women managers is because they don't like being called bossy. Because apparently the patriarchy has imbued men with this unholy power not to be discouraged by being called bossy. While these feminists think that women need special treatment because they're more emotionally fragile creatures than men. Of course, if I were to say that women are more emotionally fragile creatures and need special protection from being called bossy, they would instantly label me outrageously sexist and misogynistic. Horrible bigots like Thunderfoot. But these feminists think they are showing just how well women can compete on a level playing field by saying that women are too emotionally fragile to handle being called bossy. When I was growing up, I was called bossy. I think the word bossy is just a squasher. Being labeled something matters. By middle school, girls are less interested in leadership than boys. And that's because they worry about being called bossy. Oh, the facepalm fails me. Look, let me say it once. Let me say it loud and let me say it clear. Humans are a sexually dimorphic species. Men and women are biologically different, which may or may not mean that women are more biologically, emotionally fragile. However, what we call fair in society is equality of opportunity, which in a sexually dimorphic species does not guarantee equality of outcome. In simple, simple terms, the reason that it's men who invariably end up shifting a couch up the stairs is not because of sexism. Men are not conspiring to keep the couch moving trader boys only club with all the privileges and entitlements that come with it. It's simply that they're physiologically better suited for it. You know, the same reason we divide the Olympics up by sex without everyone losing their shit and calling it sexism. If you want to call it sexism, it's simple. You have to show that there was not equality of opportunity. Because in a sexually dimorphic species, showing inequality of outcome just doesn't cut it. But setting aside the 1984 style aspirations of being able to control words. This is Ban Bossy, take one. I wouldn't mind so much, but one of the women they have on board was Condoleezza Rice. There is a, a tie between um, Iraq and, and what happened on 9-11. Here's a radical notion. Maybe we should ban politicians from telling bold-faced lies to the public to take them into an unjustified war. There is a, a tie between um, Iraq and, and what happened on 9-11. You know, one that'll kill tens of thousands of people. 
There are no limits. Before we worry about banning the word bossy. Just saying. Ban bossy. Join us to ban bossy. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. The US Secretary of Education saw this and thought, oh, ban bossy, that's a really good idea. I really want to be a part of that. This is your brain. This is your brain on a new wave of feminism. Bossy. 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 When I was growing up, I was called bossy. I think the word bossy is just a swasher. Being labeled something matters. By middle school. The, the physical dimorphism is accompanied by behavioral dimorphism as well. You know, it's a consequence of having that neural net we call a brain <laughs> marinated in mostly one hormone or another. Nah, it's got nothing to do with sexual dimorphism in, morphism in humans. You know, that outrageously sexist reason why we split up the Olympics by sex. The belief that women are somehow a naturally weaker gender is a deeply ingrained socially constructed myth, which of course is completely false. Oh, the fact. We need to help them lean in. Words matter. Let's just ban the word bossy. Yes, apparently this is the latest in a string of feminist explanations to explain why there aren't more women in certain fields. I mean, it's got nothing to do with sexual time. Girls are less interested in leadership than boys. And that's because they worry about being called bossy. Yeah, that's right. What else could possibly explain the lack of women in leadership roles but the word bossy? And what better way to correct that than by banning a word?